Hi, I'm Sarah Tilly from Curious Maths. I'm a primary maths consultant based in London and I've been in education for over 20 years. And I'm really excited about the video that I'm going to do for you today because it is one of my real passions and that is teaching maths through story. So when I was a class teacher I was always rummaging in the library trying to find books that I could make some maths links for to share with my class but Actually, these days, there are just so many books out there that they lend themselves so well to teaching maths through story. And actually, a lot of them now have been specifically written for that purpose. So I'm a big fan of sharing a story with the class. I think there's something very safe and comforting about sharing a story. And not all children like reading, but most like being read too. And children like doing something different as well, don't they? So I think teaching a week of maths through story is something that they would really enjoy. So I am going to do a series of videos because I have a bookshelf full of math storybooks and ideas popping out of my head all the time. So what I'm going to do is a series of videos which takes a different book each time and then what I'll do is give you lots of suggestions and they are only suggestions but lots of suggestions for how you might use it in class or at home. So for my first video I thought I'd better choose a good one. So I have got this absolute corker. How big is a million? So How Big is a Million is written by Anna Milbourne and it is illustrated by Serena Riglietti. And I've used it lots of times in school before and it is a big hit. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a summary of How Big is a Million and then I'm gonna take you through five sessions worth of ideas for maths activities that you could do in your class or at home with your child, all around How Big is a Million. I hope you enjoy it and find it useful. Let's do a quick summary of the book. So this book is called How Big is a Million and this is the main character, Pipkin the Penguin. So I would use this book with year five pupils because of the size of the number. Um, don't let the little penguin character put you off. I've used it with lots of five, year five classes and none of them have complained yet. So quick look at the illustrations and the main story. So Pipkin is a little penguin who wants to find out how big a million is. And he goes to ask his mum and he, she points out to him 10 fish and he says that's quite a big number but it's not as big as a million so he goes off on his journeys to try and find a million. He comes across a hundred penguins in a huddle and he also comes across a thousand stars but he's still not satisfied and wants to find out how big a million is. So he continues his journey and ends up back home and he was ever so sleepy and ever so disappointed because he couldn't find a million and this is where the most exciting part of the book is so his mum takes him outside and at the back of the book in an envelope you can see mine's all a bit battered and bruised you get this absolutely massive poster which has a million stars on it so uh, every time I've used this book the children are practically trying to pull this out of my hand to look at it it's absolutely fantastic so that's a little summary of the book, How Big Is A Million? And what we're gonna do now is have a think about what activities could you do around this book? So this book is ideal for year five pupils. So if you're a teacher in England, here are the national curriculum objectives that you'll be looking at. And I've also listed some of the other skills that children will use if they're doing any kind of work through story and that might be estimating, predicting, organising, using trial and error, agreeing and disagreeing, sharing responsibilities, working with a partner, all of the types of things that we want our mathematicians to do, not just do loads of number crunching. So before I share some of my ideas, I just want to explain some of the thinking behind how I've presented them. So I haven't written them as lesson plans because I don't know you, I don't know your class. So I'm not going to suggest use of additional adults or differentiation. But what I thought I could help with is ideas. So how you can use this book to have creative, fun lessons in mathematics. So pick and choose, uh, expand, do whatever you like with them. But I, I hope you enjoy them. So session one is all about exploring what your child at home or your class know about a million. So get them to write a million in digits and words and see if they can put the place value headings above and that's without any support. Then perhaps show them four or five different uh, sets of digits, one of which actually is a million and see if they can identify it. And then perhaps expand it out to different calculations and see if they can write ones that equal a million, if they can consider what could be measured in real life in millions. 
uh, give examples of when they've heard million in real life and start to think about what might cost a million and why and why they think that. And all this can be done through lots of group discussion and prompting. Then I'd start to think about money and relating it to that, because that's most children's experience of a million is around money. So if you can have real notes to show them, that would be great. But talk about the biggest note they've seen and ask them if a million pound note exists. Now it does, and it's called a giant. And if you do a bit of research online, you can get some more background information. But this is a really nice clip um, from inside the Bank of England, which shows children what a million pound note looks like. And then I've put a couple of ideas that you can do when you play the clip. Um, and then once you've done that, get them to start thinking about millions. You can re read the first two pages of the book. So session two will build really nicely on session one. If you do something around money and pose the question, what kinds of things could you buy for a million pounds? Now you could draw up a class list and get children to put estimates together because it doesn't have to be just one thing that would total a million pounds. It could be several things. So encourage your children to agree and disagree and see if their um, cost estimations are valid. Uh, but I do recommend you have some examples of some real costs in real life that would add up to a million pound because um, sometimes children's estimates of costs are, are a little bit out because they have limited life experience. So don't forget also to do something around something you get for free that's worth a million pound. Then I would follow this up with an activity which you'd need a dice for and the idea is that children work in pairs or as tables and they roll a dice and they have to write uh, a couple of sentences about what they would buy if they won a million pound and they had to buy if they rolled a two for example what they would buy for their family and they can work in pairs and do a shared answer through discussion or they can work individually but lots of discussion lots of mini plenaries talking about ideas lots of opportunity to talk about generosity and kindness um, and things like that and then I would go back to the um, book cover do a little bit of reference to that and now it's time to share some pages Session three is all about the huddle of a hundred penguins. So revise the story, read up to and including page seven and share with the children the picture of the huddle of penguins, but make sure you hide the text on page eight because it gives the answer. Children need to estimate how many penguins are in this huddle. And then you can collect in the estimates and draw a number line to show the range within the class and discuss the difference between the lowest and highest estimate. Then it's time to count the penguins. So what's the best way of doing that? And you can either let them count it as a class or choose some volunteers. Go back to the book then. Who's the warmest penguin in this huddle? Why? And which penguins do you think are the coldest? So you can build on this for an investigation. So in the book, the penguins have huddled into a circle. But what if they had to huddle into an rectangular array? And children in mixed ability pairs could investigate how many different arrays would work. And when I say work, what I mean is that the penguins would actually make an, a rectangular array without any penguins being left over. So some children might need resources for this and that could be a bit tricky because of the number. But I've put a list there for you to look at. Uh, maybe squared paper with dots might be the best way to do it. To build on this, you could compare arrays and discuss which array you think would keep the most penguins warm and which array would be the worst choice. And then I would go back to the book and read pages 9 and 10. Discuss how many more than 100 is a million. Session 4 is all about the thousand snowflakes. So revise the previous learning in the story and read up to page 11. And at this point, ask children to predict what they think might be represented next. So hopefully they'll think 10 fish. 100 penguins, it must be a 1,000. And once that's been deduced, what do they think might be used to represent that 1,000? So read up to and including page 14 and show them the picture and ask them questions like, does it look like a 1,000? And talk about the different sizes of the stars and the spacing and talk about how you could check if there were a 1,000 and what things we could do to minimise errors if we were counting. Because that's what I think they should actually do for the next activity. So if you photocopy the pages 13 and 14 and sort the children into groups, they have to decide themselves how they're going to count it and share out that responsibility. Now you might need lots of mini plenaries to share approaches, get them to talk about how they're going to mark the paper, use different colours, share the paper out and some talking about how you're going to group them and what would be good ways to do that because of course the bigger the group the more likely you are to make a mistake so there are lots of maths around that and then share results and discuss different answers and then go back to the book read pages 15 and 16 and ask the question how much more is more than a thousand is one million Session five, one million stars. Revise the story so far and then ask the children if they think the penguin is gonna find a million of something. And if so, what could it be? 
Finish the story and then show them the envelope and tell the children there are a million stars on paper inside the envelope. Take out the sheet and show the children the folded part and tell them it's a fraction of the paper that they can see. And my piece of paper is split up into 24 parts and I'm assuming yours will be too. So children need to predict what fraction of the whole paper they can see. So their numerator will be one, but what is their denominator? And turn the paper over actually, let them look at the stars and, and then perhaps they might amend their predictions. So what fraction do they think they can see? And they can talk about it with partners and you can discuss their answers and then get 10 sheets of paper the same size as the fraction of the paper you've shown them and scale it up and children can talk about how big the area of the paper is, would it be big enough for a million stars, how many stars would be in each square and then give them photocopies of the 1 of the stars and they can estimate whether there are more or less than 100,000 on each square. Have a class vote, uh, make more predictions and then open the envelope and give them some time just to get really excited. Once that's all died down, you can ask questions again about how many parts to the whole and then see who uses multiplication. Um, and then talk about a million, whether it's bigger or smaller than they thought it would be. So those are my ideas of how you can use how big is a million in the maths classroom. I really hope you found it useful. Please comment below and let me know what you think and like and subscribe to my channel. Head over to my Curious Maths Book page on Facebook for more fun ideas. Thanks for watching.